Hey, I'm Anthony Ottawist. Welcome to my channel. I've been looking forward to doing this one for a while. I've actually done some other videos in between, and I just needed to wait until I knew what I was going to do with it, what it meant towards the future of the channel, and what kind of a series I was going to create on this. Uh, I think I have it figured out now, so let's get into it and check out one of the coolest things that I've seen in the whole 3D web space and how it was done. This project is called Synth City, and before we get into the 3D component of it, you need to see this loading screen. It's done really well. It actually shows things that are being loaded, does it in this retro futuristic interface, makes it look like it's typing. The code on this, a little, <laughs> it's a little scary, but the overall effect is really cool and just fits with what you're about to launch into. So we hit launch. Uh, this is gonna go a little slower than it might on your computer, and that's a lot because of my recording software. But we can also talk about some performance things uh, as we break this down. So check this out. This is an infinite environment that is procedurally generated. You could just leave this running. It could pull in information from elsewhere and integrate it into here because this isn't something that is just uh, pre-generated and just replayed. Right? It can be a little different every time it runs. Uh, there's a number of factors that will make it not just, oh, look, there's a Suzanne hologram. Um, there's factors that are not only randomized, but persistent in the randomization. It means that you could get, even though it looks random, you could get the same result every time by setting the same parameters, which is a pretty cool uh, decision, design decision that he made. All of the buildings are pretty simple in geometry and they share UVs. We're going to get into some more details on how this is done because the author was really cool in publishing the source code as well as a blog explaining how everything was built and he even answered some questions of mine. I was probably little irritating and how uh, excited I was to to better understand this but now that I do I want to share it with everybody use it as inspiration for some more projects that we can all do together we'll build some helper libraries to do various things and stuff and my idea is is just to take this as inspiration to do procedural generation in web 3d not necessarily to reproduce what is here although the tools could be used for that. To me, this procedural generation area is going to be one of the coolest things to do because it's interactive. It will uh, be allowed to work with real-time environments or data that is happening right now. And uh, it's not something that you're gonna just take from Blender, port over, and it works, right? This this takes a little extra effort, and this is the special thing that only something like this can be done in. Uh, it's like almost like a game engine in the browser, but this procedural generation thing takes on a new life when it is um, in the browser and has access to so much data and other things in the world. So I think, wow, this is one of the coolest things I've seen in the 3D web space. It actually still has a lot that could be built off of it, I'm excited to uh, explore that. All right, let's take a look at some of the explanations of how this was done. Real quick, we're gonna walk through how Jeff put together the explanation and I'll just give you a quick summary as we go through it. You can see here, this is an illustration of the grid of buildings that are generated as you move around. So he's using a noise pattern and then grabbing grids of objects or grids of values and the grids that he's grabbing are based on wherever you are in in that world so he's going to grab enough that is uh, going to surround you and based on those values is what determines what kind of block city block he's going to generate which are already created they're just spawned with you know some random random elements to them, but they are spawned on this grid. Because it's a grid, you also will have known spacing between 
buildings and stuff. Let's say if you have um, a square that is one meter or a, um, a multiple of that, then you can always have a buffer for your sidewalks or streets or whatever, and you know that traffic can go in between those buildings. So he used the same, this same concept for the city blocks, lights, traffic. Uh, here you can see a, rent, a example of the city blocks and which of these city blocks is generated is based on the noise value and we're gonna we're gonna show some cool noise stuff in a bit same thing with lights one thing you remember is you can't have too many lights in the 3d stuff it's one of the most expensive things that you can do and it's really gonna slow everything down and he talks about the basic vehicle models that he's got that are uh, run in the grid and because they are run in between the buildings on the lines you know that they're not going to hit buildings and he's got some extra logic in there to make sure they don't hit each other and that they're kind of within the view of the character perlin noise i'm not going to reiterate that but this does show what a noise map will look like and then how that can be translated into a grid it's just roughly turned into these zones and this is going to be also based on the frequency what kind of uh pattern you're going to get if it's if it repeats or if it's going to have uh, just like these big masses that go across your your uh, grid here he's showing how he's got buildings that are the same geometry but have different textures and uvs and then the post-processing i'm not going to get into the sound stuff the sound design does perfectly match the environment uh, so that was done well but it is not at all a expertise area of mine I'll leave that to someone else to comment on so one of those core concepts to be aware of is the noise and how noise is generated noise is generated by some named algorithms and you can see over here I've I've loaded up a web preview of a library called fast noise light this is not the library that Jeff used in synth city but I found that it has a lot more options and when I want to build something that can go beyond the single implementation, I like the idea of being able to change all these settings for different things and it, it, it'll still work. So here we've got the, some, uh, Perlin noise. This is the kind of noise that was used in Synth City. And you can see we can change the frequency and that will kind of make a difference as to how big some of these sections are. There's other things you can do with it in order to get different effects that you need but really fre frequency is going to be the primary thing that you mess with right it says it says how like what the scale is of, of this noise that you need to be done seed is the primary variable that says w how repeatable it's going to be so whatever your seed is your, your seed is going to change the randomization, but anytime you feed back that same seed is going to give you the same results. So these two are, are the most important and you can also do, you can also change the type of noise, which will give you different kinds of effects. And I think that's pretty cool as well. This library starts getting pretty interesting in that the whole thing will also work in 3D. So, if I start moving up and down, you can see what it'll do in 3D space and we can map these things, this in 3D as well. Uh, this can be pretty interesting if you want to generate things in more than just like a 2D grid, but you want to have things uh, with the same noise map. You want to generate things on multiple layers and have them interact with each other somehow or be uh, compatible. Then you can do a 3D noise map with this library pretty cool so this might have you wondering what does this mean for the channel when it comes to the synth city i don't want it to just be a hype thing i think it's worthy of hype like i said it was in a big inspiration for things that i want to accomplish so what's going to be coming up is we're going to have some libraries we're going to go through some of the uh, ways this was done and how to reproduce it in React 3 Fiber because Synth City was done in regular 3JS. We're going to go through some of those technologies. <clears throat> now, one thing that 
Sin City did not use was instances, at least not that I could I could figure out. That is an improvement that we're going to get right away in some of the libraries I'm working on, where instances as a core part of being able to have multiple objects. And you can see I've got a grid that builds off of fast noise here and it duplicates a cube. Well, all these cubes are only, the there's only one draw call. I can animate them through their positions and it's all still treated as one mesh. What we're gonna do is start going into all these different ways that we can use procedural generation with libraries to help do cool things like this. Beyond just working with noise and instances, I know that I want to at least work with voids and have instances for that in a library that that can handle it and make it easier for everybody. Again, this is all gonna be done in React 3 Fiber. So stay tuned. When we get into the next videos, we're, we're just gonna jump right in. We're not gonna be showing the, the hype section like Sense City, and we're just gonna be starting to work from there, from the point of inspiration to actually accomplishing some stuff. So if you wanna go on that journey, make sure that you are subscribed or check back often, and I'll see you in the next video.